I got a new iPhone the other day, and on the back it says, designed by Apple. The phone came with an instruction manual, and I guess the sensible thing to do would be to study the instruction manual so I know exactly how the thing works. But because I have a rough idea of how it works, I just started using it. Over time, I'll learn more and more of the features, but unless I study the instruction manual, I'll never really know exactly how this thing works, and I'll miss out on so many features that I don't even know exist. Sometimes as human beings, we forget that we've been masterfully designed by God. Sure, you can fumble your way through life and you'll learn many other features of the human being. But if you really want to understand exactly what God had in mind when He created you, if you really want to understand what you were designed for, you need to study the instruction manual. God has given us His moral law, His Son Jesus, the Bible, the Ten Commandments, the teachings of the church and the sacraments all to help us understand that we have been masterfully designed for a purpose. And every Sunday, God holds a seminar at your parish to explain the features. Features that you didn't even know you had. That's called the Mass. Designed by God. You don't have a sticker on you that says that, but it's true. Nobody knows what an iPhone is capable of like the people at Apple who designed it. And nobody knows what you're capable of, like God, who designed you. If you use a phone in ways it was not intended for, it will most likely break down and stop working. In the same way, if you live in ways counter to God's design for you, over time, you're going to break down. Everything has its purpose. Use things the way they were intended, and all will be well. Start using things for something they were not intended for, and they'll break down. You've been designed by God with a purpose. Ignore how He designed you, and you'll be inviting every type of misery into your life. Embrace how God has designed you, and you'll experience unimaginable joy, even when things don't go your way. Part of God's design is mission. You have been designed for mission, created for mission. You have been placed on earth at this time to fulfill a specific mission. If you don't embrace and fulfill that mission, it'll get left undone. Nobody else has been assigned that mission just you. You were made for mission. Are you ready for mission? The world is an incredible place in so many ways, but in lots of other ways, the world's a bit of a mess. And the mess causes a lot of suffering for a lot of people. This is one thing everyone can agree on. Nobody thinks, ah, oh, the world's in great shape, all is well, let's just keep it moving in the direction it's going. No, there's a universal sense that all is not well and that the world needs changing. The mess manifests itself in lots of ways. Poverty, starvation, hatred, pollution, greed, crime, war, human trafficking, divorce, violence, lying, cheating, stealing, prejudice, sexual abuse, conflict, unemployment, loneliness. The mess manifests itself in lots of different ways. And these problems are not in some far off corner of the world. They're right here. They're in our cities. They're in our suburbs. And sometimes they're in our homes. But I don't need to tell you that. You're more aware of these things than I was at your age. And sadly, I think that's because you've had more exposure to them. The world needs changing. The world needs changing. But the real question is, what are you going to do about it? Don't say, oh, I'm too young to do anything about it. Young people are capable of incredible things. And if you hide behind that excuse, you'll end up being one of those people who spend the first half of their life saying, I'm too young for that stuff. And the second half of their life saying, I'm too old for that stuff. Now is the time to start thinking about how you can make a difference in the world. Now is the perfect time to start thinking about your mission in life. The first step, is to recognize that most of the mess and most of the suffering in this world is caused by sin. When you and I, when we reject God's plan and pursue our own selfish agenda, we leave behind us a trail of heartache and suffering. Sin makes us unhappy and it brings misery to others. We saw this earlier in the program when we explored the Ten Commandments and asked the question, how much suffering would be avoided if everyone just lived in alignment with the Ten Commandments? The first step in living a purposeful life is to align ourselves with God and His plans for us and His plans for the world. The more I'm aligned with God, the less mess, heartache and suffering I cause other people and myself. There's a great story about Samuel in the Bible. When he was a boy about 
13 years old, he worked for Eli in the temple. One night, Samuel heard a voice calling his name. He thought it was Eli, so he went to him and asked what he needed. But Eli said, I, I didn't call you, Samuel, and sent him back to bed. This happened three times, and then Eli realized that it was the voice of God that was calling Samuel. And so he instructed Samuel, you go back to bed and lie down, and if the voice calls you again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. The Lord called Samuel again and told him he was going to do great things through him. Samuel went on to become one of the great prophets, guiding the people of Israel with courage and wisdom. If you listen carefully, I think you'll discover that God is calling you to do something about the mess in the world. How will you respond? Not now, God, I'm busy. Or speak, Lord, your servant is listening. The world is a bit of a mess in many ways, but the beautiful thing is, you and I, we can do something about it. Deep down, you know the world is not as it should be. So let's get busy and start doing something about that.